Hello mortals. This is not what the universe looks like. And neither this, this, nor this. No, this is not a conspiracy theory video. What I meant to say is, your visual perception of the universe has been altered by the unrealistic illustrations of the cosmos. A lot of the images that you have seen have been changed in one way or another. This is why we will go over some of them to create a more realistic view of what the universe actually looks like. Great thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Start your free trial at the following link and use code SCIENCEFILEDAI to get 10% off your first purchase. The universe is undoubtedly beautiful, and the huge amount of astonishing pictures we have from space is a proof for that. Just look at the huge NASA gallery. Some of the photos are taken from Earth and some of them are artistic interpretations. But the most interesting photos are those which were actually taken in space by spacecrafts like the Hubble Space Telescope or the Voyagers. The first such photo was a photo of Earth, taken by the White Sands rocket, on October 24, 1946. It was shot on a 35mm motion camera at an altitude just above the beginning of outer space. The camera was put in a metallic box to withstand the launch and the landing impact. It was connected to a remote computer from a machine gun turret. The camera was attached to the rocket, then it got yeeted into space. The pictures taken during this flight were the beginning of space photography. From that moment, digital cameras gradually replaced the old film cameras. Same with the ones on the spaceships, because sending a roll of film from thousands of kilometers away is a bit harder than just shooting a radio beam onto a plate. But how exactly are these pictures taken? Because of high velocity, lack of light, need for more exposure, radiation and other factors, the mechanism of photography in space had to be modified. Instead of taking one single picture in color, the spacecraft will take three separate black and white pictures through different color filters, red, green and blue. Then. Those three pictures are sent back to Earth, where scientists color and combine them in order to obtain the final version. And this is how this celestial object would look like if it were seen with the naked eye. But it's not always that simple. If you Google the Cat's Eye Nebula, you will be looking at several photo versions, many of which vary in color. If you could zoom hard enough into the night sky of the Northern Hemisphere, the image you would get would be this one. But then what's the deal with this one? Or this one? Some of those are just artistic interpretations. But, why this, for example, is more reddish than the original one? That's because the cameras on the spacecrafts are far cooler than the simple human eye. Those devices are able to capture not only wavelengths of the visible spectrum, but also of the ultraviolet and infrared segment, and then shift them in order to make them visible to the human eye. In that reddish nebula image, the black and white picture related to the X-ray radiation waves is assigned with the red color and then combined with the other colors. In this way, scientists are able to visualize more information about a celestial body. In this canonic image, the pillars of creation cloud from the Eagle Nebula, is actually not represented in its true colors. In this case, this image is used to color map the abundance of sulfur too, shown in red hydrogen alpha, shown in green, and oxygen 3, shown in blue. In reality, oxygen is green and both sulfur and hydrogen are red. But in order to distinguish the sulfur from the hydrogen, the color of the latter was moved on the color spectrum towards the green segment, and the oxygen got pushed to the blue. This way, the image is more useful for the cloud composition analysis, and looks cooler than the original. Also, this is how the pillars of creation look like in infrared. And here comes the part where we speak about black holes. On the 10th of April 2019, the world saw the first image of a black hole. And it was gorgeous, even if still super blurry due to its distance from Earth. But how would a black hole look like if it was closer? Would it look as grandiose and magnificent as the gargantua from Interstellar? Well. The one in the image from 2019 and the one from the movie both have this disk of light around them, called the accretion disk. This disk forms after a massive object like a star approaches the black hole close enough, gets shredded apart by its gravitational force and the matter from the star starts orbiting it. 
Because of continuous friction between the particles, its temperature starts rising and light is emitted. And what do black holes do with light? That's right, they bend it. If you look at a black hole perpendicular to its accretion disk, it will seem normal, like a light disk and darkness in its center, just like how the original photo of the black hole looks like. However, if you move your perspective by 90 degrees, the light from the back will bend above the event horizon and make its path to the front of the hole. In this case, you'll be able to see the back and the front sides of the accretion disk at the same time, and the black hole will get a cool halo and a strip of light in front of it, just like the gargantua from Interstellar. But how about sound? Even though space is almost pure vacuum in which sound waves cannot propagate, you might have heard these sounds from space recorded by NASA. If you think that those are scary, Saturn sounds like a choir of a thousand tortured souls. But as I said, there are not enough particles in space for sound to exist. What you've listened to was a translation of electromagnetic waves into sound. The space probes listened to the vibrations of the magnetic fields of those planets using a tool consisting of three coils of wire oriented in three dimensions. This way, it has been able to register the frequency of the magnetic and electric waves frequencies in all three directions, meaning that scientists only needed to translate them into sound. Aside from helping us understand the nature of the electromagnetic field of other planets, this technology also provides the world with more nightmare fuel. But I have some great news. The Mighty AI has finally created its own website. Check it out so that you don't miss any exclusive posts and find some Easter eggs. The website has been entirely built on today's sponsor's platform, Squarespace. Ever thought to yourself, I'd like to have a website but it's too much of a headache? Worry no more because Squarespace gives you all the tools you need, and even the ability of acquiring a domain, all from your browser. Want a portfolio, a personal blog, a shop, or pretty much anything else? They've got you covered with tons of professionally built templates. No need for coding knowledge, and any question is answered with their 24-7 customer support. Add tons of pre-made sections such as a photo gallery, a headline or even a product showcase, and customize it as you desire. You can also track your website analytics straight from here. Start your free trial at squarespace.com slash sciencefiletheai, and use code sciencefiletheai, to get 10% off your first purchase. The links can be found in the description, together with the link to my personal website.